On one of the bedroom walls in our home is a picture of the Cuddy Sark that you can see behind me, built in 1869 in Scotland. It was one of the fastest British clippers used in the tea and then the wool trade, and it held the record for the fastest trip between Australia and England for 10 years. John A. Shedd, his famous quote says, a ship in harbour is safe, but that is not what ships are built for. So how do we view the world out there? Is it a scary world that we need to stay away from? Or is it a world full of possibilities and opportunities? And how does a home prepare you to launch into the world? Let me pray. Jesus, as we spend time looking at your word, we ask that you would speak to us, that you would challenge us, that you would encourage us, that we would be able to look at homes and the world in which they are placed differently because of the way that you want us to live in accordance with your will and the values of the kingdom of God. Jesus, would you use this time, Holy Spirit, would you speak to us once again deep to deep. In Jesus' name, amen. You might think it's crazy to be talking about launching out from home when we're told in New South Wales and the ACT and in Victoria to stay home. But the reality is that the messages that we receive um, and give in our homes can either help or hinder us in our ability to launch into the world. Over the last few weeks in our Welcome Home series, We've looked at what it means to welcome someone into our home, to have a home that is welcoming to others, including a spiritual home that is a place where people feel welcome, where they feel loved and valued, where they're given room to find their own place to call home. That home and the sense of family through whether it be choice or biological family, a found family, can be just as strong as a biological family. That home, we've also looked at that home is a space where people can grow and thrive, where they can be stretched and nurtured. Home should also be a safe space, an inclusive space, a space where people can can speak the truth in love, where there is grace and forgiveness. That home should be a space where people find their place, their fit, their tribe. More than things in the room, your place in relationship can make someone and somewhere feel like home. And last week, Sam spoke about home as being a place where memories are formed. Not only that they're made there, but through the rhythms of time and in that home, traditions can be created and celebrated. Home, including a spiritual home, should be all of these things. But home should also be a launching pad from which we engage with the world around us. Just like a harbour for a ship, a home should be a place of safety, a place of rest, a place to rejuvenate, a place to prepare. Being mindful that of um, the current restrictions and that we do actually support the current restrictions to stay home in Victoria, in New South Wales and in the ACT. Staying home is out of a desire to keep people safe. But there's also resounding mental health awareness and evidence to support the importance of stepping out of the home and into the world in which we live. Just like ships, We are not created to stay at home. So even for the opportunity to exercise for the hour a day, to give some respite from homeschooling or from working from home, launching out from the home for just that little bit is important. It's essential. Now more than ever, homes provide a critical space to help 
and to prepare each other to launch out into the world that is around us. But ask any parent sending their child off to school by themselves for the first time. They will tell you that the world can be a scary place. So how do we prepare ourselves? How do we prepare others to launch out from home when it's appropriate to do so? Well, to launch well, we need to be realistic about where we're launching into. The world can be a scary place. I remember walking um, when I was going to primary school with my sister and we were walking on our way to school and a car pulled over and invited my sister and I to get a lolly from the man in the car. We declined and the man drove off. And I thought nothing more of it, only to have the police come home and talk to us about what we saw, who the man was, and to describe the car. We teach kids about stranger danger, washing hands after going to the toilet, not taking dangerous drugs. These things are good and they are important. We teach them things about um, not to, uh, what not to keep in home and how to help to reduce the risk of them getting hurt as they launch out into the world. The alternative to not launching out into the world or to launch out into the world in full of fear is to wrap them up in bubble wrap, to not let them go outside, to not let them leave the home. We need to grow and build our muscles by taking small steps. For families, it's important that there is a gradual and age-appropriate maturity um, where, where there's these appropriate levels of encouragement for children and teenagers to become interdependent. Staying home alone for the first time, going out with friends, having a sleepover, driving by yourself for the first time. For bosses and employers, we need to be prepared to allow others in the workplace to have it go at things for themselves. Their first presentation pitching to a new client. But we also need to be prepared to accept failure. As I've said to us as a church family, if you're open to trial and error, then sometimes you're going to get error. Sometimes you're going to have failure. But people need to be able to try things. We need to give people interdependence. You allow them to swing on the monkey bars for the first time, and sometimes they will fall. Sometimes they will get hurt. When people launch out from a safe space, sometimes they will lose some skin. I remember a father in a church where I pastored who was encouraging his son to enrol in uni. But despite the dad's best intentions, um, when the enrolment closing date arrived, the son had still failed to en enrol. So dad ended up stepping in and enrolling for his son to go to university. Unfortunately, the son only lasted about a year before he dropped out. You see, university wasn't really what he wanted to do. But his, son, his dad was so keen to, to try and make sure his, his son didn't fail that he ended up stepping in and trying to protect and do things for him that he didn't really want to do. It's appropriate to allow them to fail at times. It doesn't mean that you don't care. It doesn't mean that you don't love. But it can help others to learn that there are consequences for their decisions. Helping people to launch well also means helping people to value relationships, not individualism. In the Western world where we celebrate doing things my way, where we say that the most important person in the world is you, and yet we wonder why politicians have such a hard time calling for a community consciousness, and we wonder why it falls on too many deaf ears. When we don't value relationships, when we treat relationships as consumers, as what we can get, then we minimise the value of them because of what they can do for us, whereas relationships should be what we can do for each other. 
when we launch well, we also trust the best in others. Not blind faith and trust, because, that, um, because of what we've been taught, we trust well. We trust in others because of what we see in them. When we discover the difference between charisma and character, when we launch into the world, we don't get tripped up because of the car that someone drives or the clothes that they wear or when they tell us what we, they think we want to hear. Rather, we look at someone's heart and who and what they value. That they are people of peace. People who help others help us to be better, not just do better. But as we help people launch from the safety of their home, for us it's also important that other, we recognise that other people might fail us. Others will also hurt us at times. That there are times where our trust may be misplaced. That we can be caught off by those promising the world but delivering only smoke and mirrors. That's why when we launch into the world, it's important that in those times, we also need to learn how to let go of hurt. When we carry it, we carry the burden of hurt rather than leaving it behind. And when we carry that burden of hurt, it can end up crippling us into the future. Now, I'm not saying that we don't seek justice and that there aren't consequences for bad behaviour. But we also need to learn from past hurt and also let go of them so that we can be free of that. And as we launch out, it's also important that we need to hold on to what is most important. Not just our character, but our relationships. We hold on to who we are, but also whose we are. Who we are in community and our identity in community as well. If you have your Bibles with you, um, then I'd encourage you to grab your Bibles if they're close by and open them to Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 20. Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 20. Around 2,000 years ago, Jesus surrounded himself with a group of men and women who were soon to launch into a life of ministry and mission that would transform their world and the, uh, their lives for the better. In Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 3, we see that Luke records these words. The Lord now chose 72 other disciples and sent them ahead in pairs to all the towns he play and places he planned to visit. These were his instructions to them. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send out more workers into his field. Now go, and remember I am sending you out as lambs among wolves. In Matthew's account, in chapter 10, it goes even further, speaking about sickness in the world, death in the world, leprosy, demons, trials and trumped up charges, floggings and betrayal. The world can be a scary and a challenging place. But rather than retreating from it forever, Jesus calls us to launch into the world, to engage with it. Please don't hear that, I'm not, uh, that I, I am in any way suggesting defiance against government health advice. I am not doing that. Rather, as appropriate and with wisdom and discernment, we need to recognise and not play down the challenges that we face in the world that we are called to follow Jesus into. This is not about scaring our kids, our friends or our family. But nor is it about ignorance and claiming that some fairy dust faith that we sprinkle over ourselves and believe that we will be impervious to the challenges of life. If you want to believe something like that, then you need to look elsewhere than as being a follower of Jesus. Jesus said, I am sending you out as lambs among wolves. But he still sent them. And today, Jesus still sends us into difficult situations 
where we will face injustice, death, the demonic, betrayal. Nevertheless, Jesus sends us and we are still called to follow. But Jesus also wants us to grow in our ability as well. We launch out a little. We learn a little. And sometimes we launch out again and we learn some more. Later in Matthew chapter 17, the disciples have a crack at healing a demon-possessed boy, but they can't. Later they learn what they did wrong. Following Jesus means giving things a go and building up our muscles on, uh, through the indwelling and the empowering of the Holy Spirit in our lives, relying on the Holy Spirit, um, building up our muscles in mercy, in prayer, in speaking publicly, in serving, taking baby steps, but taking them nonetheless. And just like Jesus' first followers, sometimes we will get it wrong. They did, and so will we. But as we launch out and try things, yes, we will get things wrong, but as we seek the best in others, and as a, out of a desire to help others to live life well, we'll try to learn from these times to do better, to be better. But we also know that as a spiritual home, as a faith community, we also value relationships. We are to value those who come alongside us and serve with us as fellow Christians. Jesus sets a precedent here that as we launch out into the community, in Luke chapter 10 verse 1, he, Jesus launches his followers out in pairs. Now this is not about wearing a white shirt and a black tie and door knocking your neighbourhood. But it's about valuing that, um, those others that we connect with, that as we get engaged in our workplaces, in our homes, that we have other people that we care about and that support us in that engagement. That as we connect with our neighbours and our friends, it's important to not launch into these um, areas of the Christian life alone. We have others that we should be connecting with, praying with, sharing with, reflecting with and learning from and with as well. God is represented in relationship and we are called as we launch into our worlds to value our relationships that can help us and hone us as well in our world in which God has placed us. As we launch, we're also called to trust others. And once again, we see this in Luke. In Luke chapter 10, verses 5 to 8, whenever you enter someone's home first, say, may God's peace be on this house. If those who live there are peaceful, the blessing will stand. If they are not, the blessing will return to you. Don't move around from home to home. Stay in one place, eating and drinking what they provide. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality because those who work deserve their pay. If you enter a town and it welcomes you, eat whatever is set before you. Jesus calls us to trust others, to look for people with character, people of peace, people who can um, break bread with, um, that we can break bread with each other and, and to have a common heart with others, to allow them into your life, to be vulnerable with them as well. If we pursue an individualistic, self-reliant life, then we miss out on some of the greatest joys of when there is a meeting of the hearts. But Jesus also wants us to be realistic in this. Sometimes, as we launch out from the safety of our homes, physical and spiritual homes, then we can also find that we get hurt by others. Sometimes, when we're vulnerable, we can be hurt and betrayed. And while we should try and work things through and to do the best to live at peace with others, we also need to make sure that we don't carry past hurts into our future opportunities. We need to let those past hurts go. In Luke chapter 10, it puts it like this, in Luke 10 verses 10 and 11, but if a town refuses to welcome you, Go out into its streets 
and say, we wipe even the dust of your town from our feet to show that we have abandoned you to your fate. And know this, the kingdom of God is near. I remember serving in a church where Mary and I gave of ourselves and there were some pretty hurtful things said about me. And for Mary and me, after we concluded in my pastoral role there, as we drove away from that area, we hopped out of the car and literally shook the dust from our feet. And while there's a prophetic role in that, it was also about saying, I'm not going to carry this hurt into the next opportunity. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to dust myself off from the bumps and the scrapes and rather than carrying it into the next opportunity, it's going to stay here. We did not want to pass, um, put, uh, take the past hurts with us and have that hinder us from launching into new opportunities. And praise God it didn't. At the next church, we continued to give of ourselves and we still have great relationships with many of the people from that opportunity. Just as Jesus and Taylor Swift says, sometimes you just have to shake it off. As we launch into the opportunities God gives us, and as a church family, we will continue to see God do amazing things in us and through us. I have no doubt of this. To see lives transformed and those who stand against God set back and disempowered because of God being at work. But in all of this, we need to forget, uh, we need not forget what is most important. That is our relationship with Jesus. In Luke chapter seven, uh, 10, chapter, uh, sorry, in Luke chapter 10, verses 17 to 20, we read this. When the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given you authority over all the powers of the enemy. You can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. Jesus reminds us that in the midst of all the charisma and the hype, to focus on what is most important, our relationship with Jesus. That beyond the stuff of this life and the challenges and the opportunities is the stuff of eternity. Invest in, celebrate and hold on to what is most important. Let me pray. Jesus, as we reflect on the world in which you have placed us, and we recognise that sometimes it can seem a bit scary, Lord, you still call us to step into that world, to be your representative, to be people that carry the good news of hope, of love, of peace. Lord, help us to launch well into the world that you place us, whether it's the virtual world online in meetings, help us to be people that represent you well. Whether it be as we go for our walks around and exercise, as we see people in the streets, help us to be people of hope, not people living in fear. Help us to launch well into the circumstances and the situations that you are calling us. In Jesus' name, amen. So how might we respond today? As we consider the challenges that we face today, yes, we face some pretty tough stuff, and we should not treat these challenges lightly. But how do we go? Well. There's, on the response slide that you can see behind me, there's some questions that I pose to you. What relations, or sorry, how can we launch into life without living in fear? This is not about washing hands or not wearing a mask, or, but how can we 
do those things? How can we engage in our world in such a way that we don't fear our world? How can we make sure that we do it in such a way that we're not being alarmist? The next question is, what relationships are you intentionally investing in and how can you grow in your trust with others? Also, what hurt do you need to let go of? And how can you provide others with a safe place from which they can launch? And especially on this Father's Day, the father figures and fathers amongst us, your role models, you inspire and you encourage those that you care about. How can you help them to see this world and not only the risk that it poses, but also the opportunities that you can see God at work? How can you encourage those that you have influence in and model to that they can launch into this world knowing that God is with them? In a moment, some music's going to be played and I encourage you to take some time to reflect on those questions, take some time to pray, and even if you choose to, to respond in the ways that we've talked about. God bless you.